In this section of notes, we're going to be looking at the physical geography, the climate, and the vegetation of Southeast Asia. Within the physical geography, we're going to look at the peninsulas, the islands, how that was made up, how tectonic forces affected that. We'll look at the physical features, how the mountains, volcanoes, rivers, kind of where they're located, why they're there. And then we'll look at the natural resources, which is going to be a common theme throughout this whole thing. We're going to end the day by looking at climate and vegetation. Um, climate and vegetation zones of this region are probably the easiest anywhere in the world based on their latitude zones of where they fit. Um, we're going to see a lot of tropical type climates. We're going to learn where not to go if you want to have nice hair. Prom in this region probably isn't that great based on humidity alone. Uh, and then we'll finish by looking at the highlands uh, and kind of refreshing ourselves on deciduous type of trees. Physical geography, peninsulas and islands. When the Eurasian, Philippine, and Indo-Australian plates collided millions of years ago, they formed the land masses that are known today as Southeast Asia. And you can see those zones in this map here and where they're located. This movement created upheavals called cordilleras, or parallel mountain ranges and plateaus. These extended into the Indochina Peninsula. And you can see these cordilleras here with the Anam Cordilleras located on your physical geography map. Activity from related volcanoes and earthquakes created a series of archipelagos in South Pacific. Pacific Ocean, South Pacific, these are all your archipelagos that we're talking about. And if you'll remember from the East Asia unit, Japan was an archipelago, which means a chain of islands. And so we have a chain of islands, or actually many chains of islands, um, in Southeast Asia, which was all created from tectonic activity. There were two large land areas within Southeast Asia. The Indochina Peninsula, which, which even though it's not labeled, it's this peninsula here, and the Malay Peninsula make up mainland China, extending into the western portion as well. Make up mainland Southeast Asia, I'm sorry, not China. First thing I want to look at is the mainland Southeast Asia. Mainland Southeast Asia, about half of the countries within Southeast Asia as a whole are on the mainland, and the other half are the islands. Malaysia is referred to as being on the mainland and on the insular regions, which we'll get to in just a little bit, because it has islands, which you can see in the right portion. Cut off the Philippines there. It has islands and it has part of the mainland area as well. So uh, Malaysia is considered part of the mainland and it's also going to be part of the island region um, that we see in a little bit. Laos which you can see a little bit better on the political map. It's the one in orange here. Laos is the only country that does not have a coast within Southeast Asia, and that's going to hurt them economically um, whenever we get there. And then we move on to the island countries of Southeast Asia. The insular or island countries of Southeast Asia include Brunei, East Timor, Indonesia, which is this ugly brown color as a whole here. Singapore, which is this little bitty country in the islands that make up it here. As you can see my circle. I'll change the color so that stands out a little bit more because Singapore is kind of hard to find. And then the Philippines, which are in red in the top right corner. These are all your island, your insular countries of Southeast Asia. Now the country of Singapore, like I said earlier, is a collection of one large island and more than 50 smaller islands. It's hard to see on these maps because it's so small. It sits just off the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. Now, Singapore's main island is about 221 square miles, while the other ones, a total of 18 square miles. Although more than 7,000 islands make up the Philippines, only 900 of those are settled, 
and 11 islands account for 95% of the country's area. So a lot of these have a lot of islands, but when we're thinking about their size of these islands, it's important to note that they're actually pretty small. A lot of them are. They generally have um, large islands, and they're made up of smaller islands as well. Now, in this region, as we'll see from the political map here, Oceans make up a lot of the boundaries. A lot of the political boundaries revolve around oceans, and for the most part, that's isolated the peoples until uh, kind of some recent time periods. But it's important to know that ocean boundaries created a lot of the borders, and so didn't really have to have a lot of discussion on where the borders were going to be. Volcanoes. Mountains on Southeast Asian islands form part of the Ring of Fire. These mountains are actually volcanoes, many of which, these volcanoes, are very active. There are 327 volcanoes that stretch across Indonesia alone. Java, an island of Indonesia, which you can see in the bottom portion of your map here, Java actually is one of the Ring of Fire's most active islands. Kind of separate that for you there. One of Indonesia's, or one of the Ring of Fire's most active um, islands, um, even though it looks kind of harmless on this map here. Now, rivers. The people of Southeast Asia rely on the waterways for transportation, communication, and food. Major mainland rivers include the Irrawaddy, which you can see in the west, the Chao Prio, which you can see there, central. The Red, also known as the Hong, in the northeast. And then the Mekong, which you can see uh, forming the border between Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, and Laos, not Indonesia, Indochina, I'm sorry. Now moving on to the natural resources. The flora and fauna, or plant and animal life, are more diverse here than anywhere else in the world. And a lot of that has to do with the vegetation, which we'll get to that in the next section. First thing I want to look at in regards to natural resources is the energy sources. There is a plentiful supply of fossil fuels in this area, and you can see that identified on this map um, with your petroleum, with your natural gas, with your coal. You can see those all over the place um, within this map here. So there's a lot of them. Indonesia, in fact, is one of the world's leading producers of oil and is one of the most important um, members of OPEC, the oil conglomeration of the Middle East as well as Southeast Asia. You also have a plethora of minerals and gems. There's an abundance of these. There's a lot of nickel, tungsten, copper, tin, gemstones, and even some gold that dots this area. Climate and vegetation. Tropical climates. A lot of this region lies between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. In fact, pretty much all of this region lies between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, which makes it a low latitude zone, which means we're going to have a lot of tropical rainforests. Because of this, as we'll see in a little bit, people have started taking advantage of the tropical rainforest type of vegetation zone, and it's creating a lot of problems from deforestation. First, climate zone I want to look at is tropical rainforest climate. The tropical rainforest climate, which is your dark pink on this map, is the most dominant. There's an average degree of 79 degrees Fahrenheit daily. It's hot, humid, and rainy pretty much every day. Rainfall averages between 80 to 200 inches per year. And the humidity hovers between 80 and 90 percent. Sorry, ladies, you're not going to have very good hair in that type of humidity. I don't have to worry about that problem. This type of climate zone supports a diverse ecosystem. Malaysia supports over 15,000 species of flowering plants alone, hinting at their diversity. Now, I've got a case study here uh, that I want to look at, and that's with Singapore, which again is located here right in the middle, uh, right above zero degrees. Um, you can see it here. 
Singapore used to be an island that was covered by dense rainforests and surrounded by mangrove trees. Singapore has developed into an urban area containing one of the world's highest population densities with more than 17,155 people per square mile. Lubbock, Texas has about 200 people per square mile. That'll kind of put it into perspective for you. Singapore has many endemic species, or actually they don't have a lot of endemic species. Endemic species are those that are native to a particular area. Nearly 80% of the trees and shrubs which are now growing in Singapore have been imported into Singapore, and the endemic species are being killed off. The next type of climate zone that is in the majority would be the tropical savanna. This is the second most prominent climate zone, and it sweeps southwestward across the southeastward, I'm sorry, across the Indochina Peninsula, which again is this area here, and along the southeastern um, parts of this region as well. You can see that here. This alternates between a wet and dry climates, which are categorized um, depending on where you are. For example, the Indochina Peninsula has a dry season that may last from four to eight months. On the mainland of this area, from May through September, summer monsoon winds will bring rain, and the winter dry season will extend from October to April. Then the humid subtropical, the far northern part of the mainland. From November to April, it's very cool. There's dry temperatures, and it's kind of around 61 degrees, which for us isn't very cool. That would be nice. Um, but for this area, that's pretty cool temperatures. And this is going to be some of your coolest temperatures, other than your highland climate zones, which you can see the far northern tip, right in the center, and on the eastern side of this region. The highland climate zones are going to be much cooler. There's going to be deciduous forests with moss-covered tree trunks um, on the lower slopes. Remember, deciduous trees are broad-leafed trees, and they lose their leaves in, uh, in the autumn. Evergreen forests are going to appear the higher up you go in the highland climate zones. And now the easiest map of them all, probably the easiest natural vegetation map out of any region out there. It's mainly tropical forest. In your tropical savanna zones, you got a little bit of tropical grassland in these areas here. And then we've got a little bit of deciduous, mixed deciduous trees in that far northern part, which is a highland climate zone. Other than that, main thing you need to know, tropical forest type of vegetation dominates this region based on their latitude of where they fall. Generally, it's going to be hot, receive a lot of sun, the direct rays, and it's going to be wet. All of this means humidity, means bad hair, and means tropical rainforest.